And so now we get to the stage of remembering um, that time passes by, time flows, and we all get older. And then suddenly, poof, something happens and um, someone is gone. And uh, the two people uh, that uh, we came to our attention, um, one was uh, Frank Lovell and the other was Craig Bolton. And perhaps maybe we start with Frank uh, Lovell. And um, there is one of his friends with us, Keith Green. Um, and may I give the word to you, Luck, because you you knew Frank a little better yeah, just, than uh, I from, did, and then I will come on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, always on uh, critical rationalism group, and uh, also uh, in other groups he posted something about Popper to promote his ideas. And you, you, we have talked to him on Zoom once. Uh, you remember the three of us? Yeah. And, uh, he was also at uh, Philip Beneschke's uh, congress there. And uh, well, he was a funny guy. Most people liked him very much. Huh? That's uh, uh, Frank. And uh, yeah, yeah. The, I don't I didn't know him. Of course, we, we, we liked him and we talked together sometimes and we discussed something. But on a personal level, I didn't know him very well. He, I know he had children and he, uh, he was renovating their houses and so on. He, that he told me once. But yeah, but, uh... so Keith, could you maybe turn off your uh, microphone? Uh, sorry, could you unmute yourself? Um, yes, could you tell us a little? Well, uh, I gotta apologize if my dog starts starts barking, uh, but <laughs> I will speak as long as I can or as long as it makes sense. Um, so Frank and I are, we're both from Louisville, Kentucky. That's Louisville for people outside of Kentucky. Um, and uh, I met him first without actually knowing who he was. There was a debate at this church on the subject of evolution. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I went there and it was Frank and this other friend of his, uh, uh, the friend was uh, acting acting like his second. He was the guy who was maintaining Frank's cards for him. And Frank was debating this, uh, this creationist PhD mathematician, I think from Florida. And uh, I, it, these guys had bust in religious people from, mile, from like hundreds of miles around to, to <laughs> witness this debate. I mean, there, there were hundreds of people in this, in this thing. Uh, in this place. And um, in my view, and I was still sort of on the fence about these things at the time, in my view, uh, Frank just roasted this guy. But uh, but the, the all the religious people around me, they thought the opposite. They And I didn't say anything. I wasn't going to disabuse them of, of their interpretation of events. But I thought he had done really well. And afterward, I went down and I, I shook his hand and shook Lowell's hand. Lowell was the, the friend. Uh, and uh, that was all I heard about him for a, a long time. I didn't really, I didn't even remember his name at the time. Uh, and then years later, uh, I met him again online, but I didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was the same guy. Uh, and we... Uh, uh, it, 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 we met online. It wasn't actually on the internet. This was be, uh, it was after the internet uh, was started, but it was before it became very popular. Like in the the '90s, I guess is when it really became popular. Sometime after maybe like '92, '93. I don't remember exactly. But we had known each other uh, on various uh, uh, what are called bulletin board systems, uh, and. Uh, Frank started this get together every Sunday, uh, where just I guess atheists and other free thinkers uh, would get together at a Hardee's or or someplace, and and we would just sit around and chat and goof off. And we meet like seven, start at like seven o'clock in the morning. We go to till till noon, just talking about whatever. And uh, I had already figured out that I was a skeptic at that time, and that it was okay to be a skeptic. 
And uh, I was going by a, a, a nom de guerre at that time, a sort of a, a, a pseudonym, uh, the, the Fallible Fiend. And Frank uh, approached me uh, about that. We talked about that a little bit. And he said, are you a fan of Popper? And I said, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a fan of Popper. I don't know, I don't know who that is. And uh, he he uh, uh, put me on to uh, Popper. I eventually got around to reading uh, 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 Objective Knowledge. Uh, it's one of the few books I've read more than once. I try not to read books more than once. Um, I could probably read it five more times and still uh, get knowledge from it, uh, still learn things from it. Uh, but I was just really uh, thrilled about that. And but he and I were. Uh, you know, pretty good friends. We talk, I mean, I mean, all total dozens and dozens of hours uh, over uh, several years of weekends. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's, he's super nice in real life. Um, he's very patient with people. He, he, he hardly ever, he, see, I don't, rem I don't remember specifically seeing him lose his temper at, at anybody. I did a, a lot, but I never saw him lose his temper at people. He had a very calm demeanor and he always tried to be on everybody's side. You know, he tried to see it from, you know, what, whoever he was talking with, he was trying to see, see things from their point of view. And he, uh, even people he was, uh, you know, trying to persuade. And he, uh, I would say for several important things, uh, subjects, uh, not immediately because I'm a stubborn fellow, but, uh, but over time he was able to convince me uh, to change my mind on, uh, on some important subjects. Uh, I, you know, I just, I always admired the guy. Uh, I, I thought, you know, going, you know, from the very first time I saw him when I didn't really know who he was, you know the fact that he was willing to get up there in front of all those those people, and uh, and uh, you know argue persuasively. I thought and and calmly. I, I think everyone agreed uh, the, uh, in favor of evolution. Uh, and then uh, later on to to talk with many other people about that subject and about atheism and about Popper and about philosophy in general. Uh, yeah, he's just a I, I miss him. I, you know, I find myself every few weeks, uh, I'll start browsing his timeline on Facebook and uh, just to, you know, see what little pearls I can find on there. Uh, so yeah, that that was uh, that was Frank. Man. So uh, next, perhaps I was going to ask the Frank and. I also wanted to send a signal to Phil Benesh, whether you remember, Philip, uh, that Frank was at your conference in 2014, yes. but maybe uh, first uh, to I see. Do. Uh, yeah, Phil, I wasn't sure you were close by because it's black. So, and, and I know so, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I, yeah. I, I, I was was typing, but yeah, I remember him to showing, showing up. He He drove but only made it for the last day, I think, of the conference. And uh, he had previously had some correspondence with uh, Ray Percival, if I remember correctly. And unfortunately, Ray fell ill more or less at the same time that he arrived. So it was really unfortunate timing. Um, and and, and uh, uh, so, so um, but I, he was a very nice guy and he just... He, he I, I, literally he drove straight through from from Kentucky to to Pennsylvania and just arrived in time for the last day. So it was re uh, really nice seeing him. And that that was the only correspondent I, I had with him until he contacted me maybe a couple several months later, maybe a year later, uh, seeing if I had any photos of, of the group photo uh, in which he had participated on the very last day of the conference. Uh, so that that was it. Yes, I remember him from the, from those contacts. All right, so that that video is available. Uh, this Phil entire conference is available on YouTube, and we'll put that somewhere on the our. It's already on the our Carl Popper net uh, page, the blog, but but it's kind of hidden somewhere. So now I'll make sure it's very visible so that anyone can see Frank. But now, Steve, um, tell tell us 
I, I think you knew Frank also. Um, go just, ahead. Just marginally and, and from these inter the, these events, uh, you know, uh -huh. and then, I mean, ge ge geographically we were close by and we commented about that. And I see now that I have a, a friend a hundred miles away in Louisville here on 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 our on our little interaction. Uh, but no, we had not had the the pleasure of actually physically meeting. I think he was in Ashland, Kentucky, if I remember, um, uh, which is, uh, again, this it's Kentucky, but the state is not small. Be like saying, well, we're both in, in Ohio or New York. Um, but uh, no, he was a very interesting gentleman. And, and we did have a lot of interaction during one of our uh, uh, popper events. But uh, no, I did not know him personally. Okay. I myself, um, I got to know him uh, through Facebook and it was when I joined the critical rationalism group. And I have to admit, when I joined it, I was a little nervous because I felt sometimes it was very intense. And I actually had a, a nom de guerre also that was like Jamie Hendrix. But then when I saw the intensity there, then I thought I need to go under my own name because otherwise I'm going to get accused of something. And so when I joined under my own name, then I discovered Frank with his book about objective knowledge. And I actually uh, copied his image on Facebook, but I'm pointing to a different book. Uh, but objective knowledge is also my favorite book. It was the first book I read of Popper. So, so we had that connection. And then Frank really welcomed me. I mean, I felt... Um, yeah, I felt I felt welcomed, and um, now I didn't know. Uh, I I need to uh, some people that are joining. Sorry, at the moment I didn't know Luke either, even though we're from the same country, and I was also a little nervous about getting to know Luke. <laughs> but uh, since then we have visited twice. Um, so, is there anyone else who would like to say something about Frank, like? Ed, did you, when you, Ed, you, you, you started studying Popper, um, but I, I don't know who you interacted with online, um, Ed Evans. Okay, maybe, yeah, I'll see. Ed, I was going to ask whether you knew by any uh, any chance whether you had any interactions no. with Frank Lovell. Yeah. No, sorry, my microphone was off. No, I, I didn't know him. I'm fairly new to this uh, group. Uh, okay. Yeah, and through Frank, I interacted also a little bit with, with other people. So then, look, we have another person that recently passed on. Um, and that was someone, yeah, I'll let you tell a little more about Craig Bolton. Craig. Uh, Luke, yeah. I'm not, uh, you're. Um, there was a Secretary of State with a name, sort yeah. of. Yeah, okay. Yes, I discovered uh, about Craig that at the end of March, uh, because I hadn't heard of him, and I, I looked at his uh, profile. But since the end of March, he hadn't posted anything. And I asked uh, Phil Wood, and um, Phil said, well, uh, he, he searched the internet and he found an obituary for him, which was very weird because he, he was a lawyer. He, was, he had a PhD. He had been a, a teacher in a university. And uh, it seems that they were trying to find somebody to pay for his funeral and so on. I then discovered that he had gone bankrupt and uh, had divorced his wife at a later age. He was in his 70s. But of course, we don't know the story. So it's very well possible that he, he divorced and he went bankrupt to, pr to protect his family or something. We, we really don't know anything. We only know what, what we can find on the internet. So that's all we know. And uh, it's very, a very sad story, actually. To, but yeah, we don't know exactly what happened. What we did, what I did notice is that he had become somewhat uh, bitter and somewhat frustrated lately. And some of the time he, he reacted somewhat frustrated, but yeah, not always, sometimes. Uh, but he, he could write great comments sometimes eh, on something. 
when somebody posted something, he could write great comments. He was a great writer. He was intellectual. He, he was a smart guy. And it's very weird that he ended up like this. Yeah. And we don't know what happened. To, uh, yeah, we don't know anything actually. Yeah, we just found out that uh, he died. Yeah. So I had hoped that uh, Ray Percival would be here because, uh, and that's a, a comment also to Steve. So there was a group of people that started in the 90s. Is that right? That you, you started kind of discussing Karl Popper with um, the Critical Cafe, and then you went to Yahoo in a yeah. mailing group. It started, I, and I always thought it was Ray Champion that <clears throat> maybe initialized it, but I, I could be wrong. Um, but in the um, first days of social media, America Online was sort of the the, the place, and, and, and Rafe had that um, uh, critical uh -huh. play, and then he had his rat house, so he would try to steer people to... No, the rat house is from, the rat house is from uh, the other guy. It's not from Ray. The rat house is from, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Rafe, the name's... So from Rafe Champion, yeah. The, the, critical, the critical Cafe was from Ray. And, but the Rat House is from uh, Rafe Champion. Well, so that's why I knew the Rafe Champion connection to the Rat House and the Critical Cafe, which I think was almost like a Heineck board in some ways. At least he showed a picture of yes. him, on, if I recall that right. Um, but that's reaching back into the long ago and the cobwebs. But uh, there's been a number of us that have been around a long time. I, I can't say that I'm anything more than an interested student. Um, there's some folks that, whether they're professors with PhDs or not, that know far more than I, but I, I've always maintained a, a solid interest and have enjoyed uh, uh, exchanges on these pages. And I, and I, I think that's a way to try to draw more people in, is to try to make people aware that, that these pages exist to get them to comment. Of course, you don't want Yehus to don't know anything about Popper, but it, 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 there's a balancing act, I suppose. Uh, who is the current moderators of those pages in critical rationalism and, and the like? Actually, um, just at the moment, there is the, the Facebook group and they were all a uh, Facebook group. That's one thing. Um, that's Bruce Kateness, uh, uh, Ajaba, uh, Ajibaba Ali, um, who said he was going to be here, but he isn't. And then um, we have uh, Ray Percival. Yeah. Uh, Harry, um, okay, I'll continue later uh, with what I know. But first, Harry, yes? Um, well, as somebody who knew neither of them, I'm obviously at a big, I'm not going to make any contributions about him, but I think continuing on the work question that was raised a minute ago by Steve, um, it seems to me that, that um, there must be some issues which are both tailor-made for Karl Popper and which which can achieve a certain sort of bit wider visibility, um, especially if you have people who are in the Twitter sphere. <clears throat> and uh, I hate to say this, but if there are some some particular topics that are coming up, that would seem to be a way of getting people, drawing people into the site um, by finding some topic that's particularly, particularly hot news. But I don't know what that is at the moment. Um, and uh, And I'm not very good at judging what particular um, writings of Popper, uh, or indeed videos produced by you, Margareta, and others recently, and particularly the talks by um, uh, by Jeremy, which of these would be useful um, way, useful things to advertise or to take people to from from some um, highly visible public issue today. Um, but um, and particularly, it'd be particularly good if you could take it by either of these two. Um, players either by Frank uh, or, uh, or Craig Bolton. And I have no idea what would be appropriate. Anyway, I won't say any more. That's all I've got to say. I, I, I can say I have enjoyed watching the YouTube um, interviews of Popper and uh, they, they've been very uh, interesting because uh, I've never met the gentleman. And um, um, so it, it, I don't know, I, I, I've just found uh, the, who's ever doing those and getting them out there it's been a value to me and maybe some other people that are 
you know, students, but aren't as uh, into the weeds as many might be here on this board. So are the sorry, are these these are pop, I mean, I'm aware of some. I remember seeing Popper on on the British Broadcasting Corporation, and and there've been various other ones. Is there somebody who's got a collected um, a Popper videos channel somewhere? Is that what you're oh, telling us now? Oh, okay. Oh, Google or YouTube. Thank you. Yes. Yes, it, it, it is some some are organized and some are scattered a little bit more. And, and that's why both, I think, uh, Frank and, and Greg and and Steve uh, and others that you are important because there is a community of people that uh, and, and so the people coming and going, but but the, the, the community stays alive. And so my understanding is today it moved to the Critical Rationalism Facebook group. Uh, and then there is the companion Karl Popper Facebook page uh, that Luke uh, took over from um, an, a gent an earlier gentleman. And we, we covered that in a, a previous meet and greet. But there is also the Critical Rationalism blog. And that is... Um, now the name escapes me. I need to a, a gentleman from Japan uh, who who started um, that. Hmm? Um, what's his name again? Matt Diogardi. Matt Diogardi, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and he did the critical rationalism, and he started the Facebook group in 2014. But before that, there was the Yahoo group, and I think Craig and maybe Frank must have been part of the Yahoo group, uh, but that. Uh, Yahoo stopped supporting groups, so that's totally gone. And and I never was part of that because I was busy doing other things at the time. I didn't know. But I definitely, in the 90s, the Critical Cafe, I loved it. I mean, to just go in and, and then I, I, I saw uh, Ray Percival and I discovered web uh, Rave Champions web pages. But, but so this, this community of people um i mean i think are crucially important because we kind of forget and that's what popper was it's philosophy with the people by the people for the people so so this whole thing of academic philosophy uh, it, it can be useful as long as they keep in mind is with and by and for the people and so uh, if we're not there what's the purpose of philosophy uh, I mean, because that's really the question, because then it's just for themselves to to keep their uh, job alive. But but we are actually the ones who need to put their feet to the fire. And I think that the, the Critical Rationalism Facebook group is kind of keeping the flame or keeping keeping it warm, the discussion. But as Tembe, Temba pointed out, we we need to do more <laughs> than uh but this is definitely necessary we need to talk to make sure we're on the same wavelength now uh harry is that still an old or is that a new hand uh, yeah go I'm ahead i'm sorry I, 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 the point i was trying to make i think is that there are these resources then now there's the facebook group um and uh, uh carl popper facebook page of course um, but that what, what seems to be important is that is to get to actually take take people from where they are now discussing some topic, whether it be the war in Ukraine or or some international situation and taking them to these resources where there is something relevant happening and going on there. Because people people don't just Google for a, a random comment on the war in Ukraine. They're going to read something on Reddit, for example. I'm, I'm a Reddit subscriber, but only to certain groups. And I, I, I'm just saying that, that, that ideally what one's looking for is volunteers among our wider community that are already active elsewhere and who just take the extra trouble every other time that they're connected to sort of say, oh, here's something that might be worth looking at the Karl Popper page, so this or Karl Popper page or that one, to get some, and then, then they read it once and then maybe a second and then you've got them to coming back again and again. You don't have to keep... Um, approaching them but if people if we're also in silos i think i looked for karl popper and i found him again recently after an absence of some time and i've been had this interest for many decades 50 years now 
but I, it, it was serendipity. It was a friend of mine who got me back into looking at it. And other people need just need to make that contact, is what I'm saying. And I don't know if among the people here, are any of you active in professional groups or in, in, in sort of political social groups where, where you, it's, it's appropriate for you to make that sort of link to one of these pages? And if so, that's probably what we ought to be doing. I'm trying to think of it in my own life. Anyway, enough said. <laughs> All right. Some of the people who are in black, um, either Patsy and Johnson or Diana or Matthias or Francis, any of you? Um, while I'm waiting, um, so I put in the in the chat room, uh, we had a Google group created last time and I was really for the purpose of doing things like Harry is telling, like very concrete action steps. So it, it was meant to be, yeah. But but it are all little baby steps uh, or like whatever uh, embryonic steps. But but if you put them all together, then they become something. And so the Google group is is meant for people who 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 want to kind of make their skills available that they have a particular skill uh, and, and to help each other with those projects. And, and it's also uh, because not everyone is on Facebook because the critical rationalism group is doing an, an excellent job of um, just sharing whatever information that is needed. Uh, but okay, I'm going to try again. Diana, uh, could you unmute yourself? Um, Yes, why? <laughs> Would you like to say a little bit more about, because you're now, um, um, how to, yes, you, you've been listening, I guess. So um, you came here because you saw us on Facebook, uh, like, okay, I, I'll give you the phone, uh, the, the, the podium. And the question was why I came here or why, why I joined? You you came here to be yeah for a particular reason and so when you when you will leave at the end of the day um, ah um, there is another way of saying this um, yeah so what is your impression we we have an exit a little exit survey and I'm going to share it right now uh, but Diana how how um, I I apologize I missed the introduction so maybe you said that already. Um, but what's your feedback to what has been said so far? Um, my feedback would be that I um, enjoyed the conversations and I, yes, I really enjoyed it. And to be part of it, to be able to listen and to meet all of you. And yes, and the other, yes, um, Another point would be that um, I'm mostly not familiar with um, most of the um, people, so that um, to me the um, yeah like um, the personal story that a lot of you of people shared where I could not share, so I missed a little bit more on more of um, like this, this discussions of like theories. But um, I understand that um, it's a part of such a, um, a meeting that you share um, personal stories and yes, but that's just my side because I'm not a philosopher and yes, I don't know most of the people mentioned. All right. Um... Uh, I see, uh, I will come back with the question, uh, Diana, but I see Francis uh, here. Hi, Marguerite. Uh, anyway, yes. I'll just talk about myself quickly, my, my interest in Popper. So my PhD is actually from KU Leuven. Ah, <laughs> Belgium. So, yeah, exactly. And, and my, the, 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 my PhD was on C fuller social epistemology and my first book was um, called Legitimizing Scientific Knowledge, which actually has um, uh, sections on Popper in it, actually. And in September, no, sorry, in March of this year, I presented a paper 
in Jeremy's conference, uh, I think you were part of it as well, yes. on post-truth and critical rationalism and C. Fuller and uh, Popper. So um, I find this group very, very interesting in terms of what, uh, what it's doing and the different blogs and, and Tristan Popper. And I, pres I plan to present a follow-up paper uh, in September at Jeremy's conference as well on post-truth and, and responding to some questions that came up at the March conference. All right. Um, so, okay. Um, Patsy Ann Johnson, I have seen you. Okay, sorry. Does anyone have any questions for Francis? All right. We look forward to the paper in, in uh, this coming September. Right. Thank uh, you. Now, this, I put in the chat room uh, a link to that Google group and um, and also for an exit survey if if you want to click on it before you leave so then it opens and then you can decide whether you want to uh, fill it out. Uh, but I see some other people here. Um, Hillel Kobrowski, um, Robin, uh, Je uh, Patsy, yes. Yes, I, I put in, I wanted to first say thank you to everyone that got all this going together. People were giving a little history and I found Jeremy's courses when I was isolating myself quite a bit for COVID um, and I needed some intellectual activity where I wasn't being around anyone who could infect me and it was great and that's why I'm still on the these mailing lists and I appreciate all that. And um, I do know a little bit about Popper, not near as much as most, but I um, have a PhD and I did a sabbatical year in history and philosophy of science. And that's where I learned, you know, the most about um, Popper. And so anyway, I just want to say, be sure we get all the information out, even just in this last little section where people were talking about the various groups. I did get the email about this conference or this day, whatever you call this. Um, and be sure that goes out by email also. I will try to do your survey and get those links, but sometimes those are hard to get to. Sometimes things close up before one's done and whatever. So just make sure we do get that information that we know about all the face. I'm on some of the Facebook, but maybe not all. I wasn't sure with the, with the descriptions. And then the chat, I've been in some Zoom groups where they'll send the chat out when it has links, like you're just saying. So if you put them in the link here, but if it comes by email, it's much easier to deal with, you know, and yeah. have it a later date. So that, and you, you maybe we're just planning to do all that anyway, but I just wanted to say, you know, since we want, there's some interest in getting people connected that, that I think the email is a really nice follow-up and the Facebook is, you know, good too. And, and just, I'm glad we have this because we're, I live in Pennsylvania, you know, we're various places, but especially I'm, I'm grateful because I never did get COVID. Um, but, you know, back when there were no vaccines and whatever, it was like, I, had enough issues that I didn't want to get COVID because I already had enough of their health issues. And so um, I'm, I'm just real grateful. You know, I'm grateful that people who are interested in things and can get me thinking about things, you know, that I'd had a while back in actual, you know, graduate courses, that, that that's been available. It's, it's important to take care of, you know, intellectual stimulation uh, what the word is to keep thinking as we mentioned for the general populace you know for all of us so that we just don't get sloppy maybe is the word <laughs> not being very articulate here but we have huge problems you know in the united states and they'll not be easily solved but if we have some places where we can reasonably think about things and I used to feel that as an educator too, as a university professor, if I could get people thinking about some things, maybe it'll 
help them later on think about some other things, you know, where they get used to thinking and not just reacting and not believing everybody. And this kind of group does well, you know, the kind of things I was trying to do as a professor too with my students. And it's very important in a society because if we don't have that, more and more things are gonna fall apart. So thank you all, what you do is very important. All right. So uh, thank you, uh, Patsy. I, I do remember you from the Jeremy courses. I, I saw you, but I, I, I sometimes saw your picture, but most of the time I just saw your name. So yeah, my picture is gone again. I keep putting it up on Zoom and then I'm, I, I get back on another thing and it's gone. I don't know if somebody has invited yeah. that, but I put my picture on Zoom like five times. The, the other thing is I do use the two names, Patsy Ann, just you know, for future. Uh, that's what I, I was given before I was born. So I'm still trying to hold on to it. <laughs> okay, Patsy Ann. Uh, so Matthias, um, I see you unmuted yourself. So, and then uh, we have Hillel. Um, so who shall go first? Uh, Matthias, since you're unmuted, perhaps? Uh, we're not hearing you. I don't know whether it's technical difficulties. Um, otherwise, um, Hillel Kobrowski, yes. yes. Hello. Hi, good, hi, yeah. good evening. I, I am Hillel Kobrowski from Israel, one of the students of Agassi. Uh -huh. I, I just uh, know him two years ago, three years ago. And, uh, and I start following him and we are become a friend. And uh, I came from the area of uh, cybersecurity. Uh -huh. And I start interesting in uh, philosophy, philosophy, especially in the area of technology of philosophy. And uh, start writing about cyber, cyber security with philosophy together combination between the two uh, segments. You are on mute, uh, Margrethe. So I was going to ask, so uh, have you published something in the area? I, 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 I published an article in Hebrew. It was yeah. very interesting. Agassi, I, 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 give the, I give Agassi to read it, but it was very close uh, before the day, it was very close before he died. So okay. I don't have a chance to talk with him about it. Mm -hmm. But a lot, a lot from the article talk about Agassi ideals, and I combine between them with the, about cyber security and how how much cyber security affect humanity, and how much technology affect humanity. So it's a lot from things that I read from Agassi books. And some of them, it's several things that I have a chance to talk with Agassi in the last two years. So it was, it was a great, I, I need to translate it to English, but I don't yes. have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's a unique area because nobody write about it before. The combination between philosophy, technology, and cyber, and security. Uh, yeah, that, cyber security. Cyber security. That people feel uh, the need to protect themselves from what, and now the question is, what do they protect themselves from? So uh, make sure if you, when when it's translated in English, uh, that it finds its way to us. Uh, now, Harry, your your hand is up. I so I, um, just, I just wanted to say that that's precisely yes. the sort of topic that we should be advertising. If, if we can make a connection between a sexy topic like this in English, hopefully, and the work of well, I think that's a precisely the sort of way that you'll get a lot of people interested because it's all over the press. Anyway, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay. 
Look um, forward to it, Hilo. Thank you. Sorry, it was too bad. Yes, the well, connection was uh, well, I broken. Just wanted, I just wanted to say that uh, it's uh, that's precisely the sort of thing that should be made public and and we could be used as to lead people into an interest in Karl Popper's work if we can make that sort of topic widely um, publicized. So I look forward to that in English. We can sell sell Popper that way, not to mention Hillel. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Ari. I I, I plan to translate it to English in the in the next several months. All right, any other questions, comments for uh, Hillel? Um, then I, I see two more. I mean, actually, I'm going to just call to uh, everyone who hasn't spoken yet. Uh, Marilyn R and Robin. Um, and I don't know whether where people are because they may be away from their uh, laptop or so. And and Jerry, uh, are you are you listening? And then I'm going to try. Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, are you? So Gabriel um, would like to do a thesis or um, a, a graduate studies on Karl Popper's philosophy. And um, that was one of the things we, we wanted to do. Ah, I see Gabriel there. Uh, in, in the Google group, with the Google group that we can give support to Gabriel in whatever uh, capacity that we can be helpful. So Gabriel, how, how is it going? Um, Um, yes. I, I, well, I've been extremely busy with the with the normal semester of my uh, my college. I mean, the last year of my of my undergraduate uh, degree in, in biology, undergraduate course in biology. Um, so I I actually haven't made much of much of a progress, um, and I still I'm still thinking I'm still uh, looking for uh, opportunities to to get into a master's program no, uh, hopefully out of Brazil but if I if I don't find the opportunity I, I will do it yeah. here in Brazil anyway uh, I'm I uh, I'm still uh, not sure uh, on the specific theme I want to to study, uh, I know I, I really want to study something in something related to Popperian philosophy. Uh, I've been taking courses in probability, uh, so I hope that helps me when I when I get there. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's, that's my current situation. All right, um, so I have put in the chat room um, a link to a Google group and also the the, the karlpopper.net page. So it's just a way to get in touch with each other. There's just one email address, ourkarlpopper at gmail.com. And if you send something there, then you eventually can get in touch with everyone. Um, so Jerry, uh, Mini Technic, Matthias, Marilyn, Robin, and then uh, maybe uh, Anastasios, Tony, uh, uh, Nazis. Do you have any uh, closing comments? Uh, okay, then. Um, ah, yes. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry yes. Uh, I keep changing my name. Uh, so my le my full legal name is Anastasios, but I go by Tom, if that's easier. Tom, for, all for right. People, so but, I call but, you Tom. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to thank you. I just wanted to thank you. It seems like we're, the event is being wrapped up and I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm in, uh, I'm in the United States. I'm in Chicago area. And it's just very nice to see people from everywhere. Um, when we think of philosophy, we think of Karl Popper. It seems like we think of Europe. We think of 
you know, England and different countries. And it's nice to see that there's, I think I heard people from Kentucky, from uh, different places in the United States, uh, just because the culture in America, as far as I can tell, it's not as, you know, intellectual culture and like philosophical culture. It's not a very, it's more pragmatic, more um, business oriented mentality. Uh, but it's just nice to see um, this this event and uh, and and uh, wanted to thank uh, the organizers and um, people who uh, put this all together. And I, I've been part of the Facebook group for some time now. Uh, haven't been super active, but I have been following uh, the different posts. And I studied philosophy as an undergraduate many years ago, um, and I was familiar with Karl Popper. But at least the impression that I got was that uh, the Open Society and its enemies uh, was kind of like the book that I found in uh, in uh, different bookstores, and I, I looked through that. Um, and I remember I was surprised, I was taken aback by his um, critiques of, of Plato because, you know, Plato has such a prominent, you know, position as the, um, I wouldn't call him the father of Western philosophy, but a lot of people say like Whitehead, Alfred North Whitehead talks about him being the, everything being a footnote to Plato. Um, so I, I didn't really know much about Popper, but then uh, I came through. I came to Popper through David Deutsch. Uh, just um, came to his work through another source. But it's just funny how these things map out. But just wanted to thank any, everyone. And, and and I might have sent out some uh, Facebook uh, face friend requests to different people, like just some of the names that I've seen. So don't be surprised if you see anything from uh, Tom Nazis. So thanks again. All right. So uh, before uh, I go to Robin, uh, I want to say we our final closing segment is going to be a, a quick look at the book by Sheldon Richmans. Uh, just a quick introduction. He's a student of uh, Joseph Agassi and he wants us to learn to ask questions again. And I, I just wanted to do a quick introduction to that, but I was going to wait till we were on the hour. Uh, with starting that. So there is a little more to come. Now, uh, Robin, um, I remember you from um, from the past events. Um, did you uh, tell us a little bit about how you're active in the in the popper groups? Uh, uh, well, I, I do make occasional contributions, but only occasional ones. And I'm afraid today I've been had to be rather busy on other things. So I've been dipping in and out, really. So I, I've not been in a position to follow all the arguments at length. So I'm, that's one of the reasons why I've not, on this occasion, uh, decided to post any questions in. But uh, it's certainly been extremely interesting, yes. 